And the last thing that really bothered me, and this is, I think, where we all are here, after 20 years, I don't see that we could sit in a, in a meeting like this. We did this during the Secos, Secos era, where we fought for the same thing, and then the 20 years. I can't see the significance of a meeting like this 21 years after, after unity. But we are here today, just showed you that we moved in a rocking chair. We moved, but we didn't go anywhere. And, and, and that, is, that is bothering to me. When, <coughs> when we look at the Super 15, we had a few players of, of color, black players, who actually were the best players in Super 15 in South Africa. They were all excluded from, from, from the chance that we had to play them in a friendly match against the World 15. Then the coach came out and this, this actually caused me to stand up what I'm standing up for. Then the coach came out and he said that Jesse Creel is the best center in the world and he never played there. He never played there, but he's the best in the world. Was that to exclude people like Juan de Jong? Or, 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 and those kind of players? I don't know. But it's fine, it's the best in the world, you grant it to him. When John de Villiers, and it's not about John de Villiers, but when he got back, he dropped the best player in the world for John de Villiers. So it means I can go lose this one because he dropped the best player in the world according to him for John de Villiers. But then he dropped another player of color to keep that boy in the, in the, uh, on the field of play. For four years, Andre Brasso was too small. His father called me numerous times. He called me. We spoke about it. And all our black flankers were, were there for four years. Were good enough to travel with them, be on the bench, come off the bench for ten minutes, to, uh, five minutes, three minutes. And when all the other options were gone, Andre Brasso came over all those black flankers and he became so big in one game so that he could play above all those other players. I wasn't good enough to coach my country because of my color. But we managed to take that country to number one in 2009. The rugby team to, to, to number one, we managed that. Now, and while I did that, the rugby bosses wanted to get rid of me for reasons that still sinister. Now, we took it in 50 years from two to five, and they say, okay, we are gonna give you another four years. So, in my assessment form that I still have at home, if you look at what the boxes you tick, transformation, technical knowledge, all those kind of things, nation building, all those kind of things, and you tick all those boxes, and they wanna get rid of you. If you see this guy didn't tick one of those boxes, but they give him another four years, what is the reason for the four years? Is there something that he protects that they want to relive or keep on living for the rest of our lives. 